Good evening, everyone, and welcome to our 530 Mass here at Sacred Heart. Uh, hopefully many of you have the worship aid in front of you, and we encourage you to join in on all the responses as we gather for the worship today. Once again, I remind you that uh, during the Christian prayer, when I say the mystery of faith, if you just respond uh, immediately with the uh, verse, uh, we proclaim your death, O Lord, etc., uh, that would be great. As we begin our liturgy today, let us stand and together recite the entrance and honor. If you, O Lord, should mark iniquities, Lord, who could stand? But with you is found forgiveness, O God of Israel.
A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. On this mountain, the Lord of hosts will provide for all people a feast of rich food and choice wines, juicy rich food and pure choice wines. On this mountain, he will destroy the veil that veils all peoples, the web that is woven over all nations. He will destroy death forever. The Lord God will wipe away the tears from every face. The reproach of his people will remove from the whole earth, for the Lord has spoken. On that day it will be said, Behold our God, to whom we look to save us. This is the Lord for whom we looked. Let us rejoice and be glad that he has saved us, for the hand of the Lord will rest on this mountain. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. I shall live in the house of the Lord all the days of my life. I shall live in the house of the Lord all the days of my life. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. In verdant pastures he will, he will give me repose. Beside restful waters he leads me. He refreshes my soul. I shall live in the house of the Lord all the days of my life. He guides me in right paths for his name's sake. Even though I walk in the dark valley, I fear no evil. For you are at my side with your rod and your staff. I Spread the table before me in the light, in the sight of my foes. You anoint my head with oil, my cup overflows. I shall live in the house of the Lord all the days of my life. Only goodness and kindness follow me all the days of my life, and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord for years to come. I shall live. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Philippians. Brothers and sisters, I know how to live in humble circumstances. I know how to live with abundance. In every circumstance and in all things, I have learned the secret of being well fed and of going hungry, of living in abundance and of being in need. I can do all things in him who strengthens me. Still, it was kind of you to share in my distress. My God will fully supply whatever you need in accord with his glorious riches in Christ Jesus. To our God and Father, glory forever and ever. Amen. The word of the Lord. Thanks. spoke to the chief priests and elders of the people in parables, saying, The kingdom of heaven may be likened to a king who gave a wedding feast for his son. He dispatched his servants to summon the invited guests to the feast, but they refused to come. A second time he sent other servants, saying, 
Tell those invited, Behold, I have prepared my banquet. My calves and fat cattle are killed, and everything is ready. Come to the feast. Some ignored the invitation and went away, one to his farm, another to his business. The rest laid hold of his servants, mistreated them, and killed them. The king was enraged and sent his troops, destroyed those murderers, and burned their city. Then he said to his servants, The feast is ready, but those who were invited were not worthy to come. Go out, therefore, into the main roads, and invite to the feast whomever you find. The servants went out into the streets and gathered all they found bad and good alike. And the hall was filled with guests. But when the king came in to meet the guests, he saw a man there not dressed in a wedding garment. The king said to him, My friend, how is it that you came in here without a wedding garment? But he was reduced to silence. Then the king said to his servants, Bind his hands and feet and cast him into the darkness outside where there will be wailing and grinding of teeth. Many are invited, but few are chosen. The Gospel of the Lord. I don't know, you've probably heard a variation of the story about a wife who invited some people to dinner. And at the table, she turned to her six-year-old daughter and said, Honey, would you like to say the blessing? And the little girl said, Mommy, I don't know what I would say. And the mommy said, the wife answered, Just say what you hear mommy say. And so the daughter bowed her head and said, Oh Lord, why on earth did I invite all these people to dinner tonight? <laughs> Well, obviously, the king in today's reading is the opposite. He wants people to come to respond to the invitation. He wants to fill up the banquet hall for his son's wedding. But we hear of refusal all over the place. The first group of people he invited to come turned down the invitation, which would have been a most grievous insult in the time of Jesus when hospitality was considered the highest virtue. Then the king sent another invitation out, but it was turned down with excuses, and some even killed the messengers that brought the invitation, and the king was furious. And then he sent out a third time a wave of people to invite everyone. He said the good and the bad alike. And then we hear that caveat at the end where they came into the banquet hall, but one was not dressed in a wedding garment. And the king was furious again and bound him and cast him out. Well, what in the world is going on here with these invitations and the fury of the king and the wedding feast? Flannery O'Connor was a great Catholic writer of the last century. In fact, um, she was part of the writer's workshop at the University of Iowa, and for a year, I was the associate pastor of St. Mary's Church in Iowa City, and when she was a student in Iowa City, she would attend St. Mary's Church, so there was a little Flannery O'Connor connection during, at that church in Iowa City. Um, some of you probably know her, if you're into literature at all. She had short stories that jarred people. I mean, they had different plots and twists that were kind of a bit unique. And um, asked why she wrote in that fashion, Flannery O'Connor responded, in a land of the deaf, you have to shout. In a land of the deaf, you have to shout. And I think the parables of Jesus are part of that genre. I mean, he's trying to wake people up with these parables that seem to go in unique directions. And obviously a parable is meant to shake us up. And so if it shook you up, if you're pondering what's going on here, what about this king, what about all these twists and turns, then you're in good stead. That's exactly what a parable should do. In a land which is deaf to the things of God, we need to shake them up, startle them, wake them, alarm them, surprise them. 
So this is a story along the lines that Flannery O'Connor would appreciate. However, again, we shouldn't literalize the story and turn it into a straightforward allegory. The exaggeration we might miss today, a king is giving a wedding banquet to his son, is really something deeper going on. You know, one of the great images of the church is that of a wedding feast. And Jesus is the groom, and we are the bride. We're not only invited to the wedding feast, but as members of the church, we are an integral part. We are part of the wedding itself, the wedding between God and humanity. And we should not take that lightly. We're invited. You know, sometimes it happens, and I, when I was younger, I used to play basketball. I was never really that good at it, but we had some really good players. I know our high school went to Substate that year. Um, but there was a couple players that obviously they would always be there, but we would say sometimes they didn't really show up. <laughs> they were there, but they were not playing their A game. They were there, we were depending on them, they were the best players, but sometimes they were having a bad night. They didn't really show up. And that can be the same with us in our faith. We can be here, but really not be here. We can say responses to the worship that we are entering into, but our heart is not really there. Maybe sometimes our mouth is not even there. We're just not even saying it at all. We're just bumps on a log. The Lord today, it seems to me, wants us to respond. That's the whole point of that last phrase, that many are called, but few are chosen. You see, the chosen have to respond. The chosen have to enter into it wholeheartedly. The, summon, the Sunday's parable today ends up with that one man who was not clothed properly for the wedding, not in a wedding garment. So what was that all about? I'm kind of reminded of our baptism, when right after our baptism, except during these times of COVID, we clothe the newly baptized in a white garment. And the priest or the deacon says, uh, you've been clothed in Christ. See in this white garment the outer sign of your inward dignity and bring that dignity unstained into the kingdom of God. That's what that garment is. It's our outward dignity. In fact, St. Gregory the Great has a wonderful reflection. He says this about this parable. He says, but you, my friends, since you've already come into the marriage feast, church, our holy church, as a result of God's generosity, be careful lest when the king enters, he finds fault with some aspect of your heart's clothing. Gregory goes on to say, what then must we understand by the wedding garment but love? That person enters the marriage feast but without wearing a wedding garment is the one present in the church. Maybe even having faith, but not having love. He may have faith, but does not have love. And so we are correct when we say that love is the wedding garment, because that is what our Creator Himself possessed when He came to the marriage feast to join the church to Himself. Isn't that awesome? That's what it is. We are called to love as God has loved us. Dr. Brent Petrie goes on with another idea about the garment. He says, if we want to participate in the eternal wedding feast of the kingdom, then we need to dress like Jesus dressed. We need to dress ourselves in the garment of righteousness and in works of charity, which, by the way, makes me think of a beautiful tradition that we have in the church, and again, he goes on to say about after baptism, we are, we are clothed with a white garment that represents our baptism. I've often thought that in my ideal church, um, if I could have my way, and you're probably lucky I don't, but I would want all of us to be dressed in an L, in the outer garment of the, of the people who are on the altar. That's the common garment of all the baptized. That's the white garment of our baptism. So you don't have to worry about a dress color or anything. You just 
put on the white garment. In fact, I think there was one church that actually did that one time. They had a whole thing of garments and you came in and put it on and everybody was, it was spectacular. But it should remind us of again, the works of God's grace that we are to keep alive in our hearts as we move forward. It's a wonderful thing. If I could have you do something right now as I end the, the, uh, my remarks, if you could turn to the second page of your worship page, and you'll see the picture of a young teenager who is now Blessed Carlos Acutis. In fact, I saw part of the, the beatification ceremony from uh, Assisi, Italy today on my, uh, on my, my, my app. But this young man is the first millennial to have been beatified and he's certainly soon and certain to be a canonized saint probably within the next few years. He was a computer genius. He was a soccer player. He was a young man who had a lot of friends. But more importantly, he was a young man of faith. His mom and dad did not go to church. But almost from the beginning of his early life, whenever Carlos would pass a church, he begged his mother to go inside. He received early communion, first communion at an early age. And because of this young man's faith, his parents re-entered uh, the church. And in fact, his mother became a catechist in the church. And Carlos, after his first communion, went to communion as often as he could. He contracted a, a terrible form of leukemia at the age of 15. He, he lived only about a month and a half after he contracted it and had no fear of dying. He offered his sufferings up for the church. And he had some wonderful statements of faith which I've listed for you on that handout. A couple of them that I really love is, we're all born originals, unique, but we all die as photocopies generally. I love that we're born originals, but we often die of photocopies. We're called to be the saints God has called us to be in our originality, not to copy others. The other thing he said, which I really love, he said, the Eucharist is my highway to heaven. During this month of October, we are engaging in a more concerted time of prayer, a little more depth of prayer. Can I suggest that one of the best ways to grow in holiness is to come to the Eucharist often. Now you're here tonight, you don't have to be, we don't have the obligation to go during the time of COVID, but how great you're here. And we've got people that go to daily mass and don't come here on Sunday because of the COVID. But if you feel safe and can come, this is the, the surest highway to heaven, is the Eucharist. And if you don't understand it, keep going, keep going and receive the love of Jesus. Be clothed in the garment of love and bring that garment unstained into the everlasting life of heaven. Just one final thought. Carlos Acutis, his tomb was open so people could view his remains. He was pretty much intact and it's really beautiful. He's got a jogging suit on and Nike sneakers. This is the only saint, I think, in our church that will enter into sainthood with Nike shoes and a jogging seat. But how wonderful that a young man, a millennium, achieves that state of holiness and brings that garment unstained into the everlasting life of heaven. So as we gather in faith, let us stand and profess what we believe. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, even God God's not made, not substantial with the Father. Through Him all things are made. For us men and for our salvation, He came down from heaven. And by the Holy Spirit was incarnate in the Virgin Mary and became man. For our safety, He was crucified in the Lord's heart.
the church that we may hear God's invitation to life and enter wholeheartedly into the banquet that God has prepared for us. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For peace among nations, that all people may live without fear, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That we may come to full realization of what is to be generous and share our gifts through the annual diocesan appeal. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For women and men suffering after abortion, may the church's abortion healing ministry, Project Rachel, help them to find peace and healing through Christ's endless mercy. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who are recovering from natural disasters, that God will give them hope and stir the hearts of many to assist them in the time of their need. We pray to the Lord. For all who are ill, that God will ease their suffering, return them to health, and that they may experience God's abiding presence with them. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For Frank LaRosa, Mary Brinza, and all who have died, that the Lord would bring them to the feast of everlasting life. We pray to the Lord. Amen. Heavenly Father, source of life and every good gift, continue to guide us. Fill us with your life and help us to realize that with you we can do all things because of your strength and grace. Through the same Christ our Lord, amen. amen. Pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Accept, O Lord, the prayers of your faithful 
with the sacrificial offerings, that through these acts of devotedness, we may pass over to the glory of heaven, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord, our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, creator of the world and source of all life, for you never forsake the works of your wisdom, but by your providence are even now at work in our midst. With mighty hand and outstretched arm, you led your people, Israel, through the desert. And now, as your church makes her pilgrimage, pilgrim journey in the world, you always accompany her by the power of the Holy Spirit and lead her along the pathways of time to the eternal joy of your kingdom through Christ our Lord. And so with angels and saints, we too proclaim the hymn of your glory as without end we acclaim. Holy, 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 holy. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, gave him thanks, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Therefore, Holy Father, as we celebrate the memorial of Christ, your Son, our Savior, whom you led through his passion and death on the cross to the glory of the resurrection, and whom you have seated at your right hand, we proclaim the work of your love until he comes again, and we offer you the bread of life and the chalice of blessing. Look with favor on the oblation of your church in which we shall forth the paschal sacrifice of Christ that has been handed on to us. And granted by the power of the spirit of your love, we may be counted now and until the day of eternity among the members of your Son in whose body and blood we have communion. And so having called us to your table, Lord, confirm us in unity so that together with Francis our Pope and Thomas our Bishop, all bishops, priests, and deacons, and your entire people, as we walk your ways with faith and hope, we may strive to bring joy and peace into the world. Remember our brothers and sisters fallen asleep in the peace of your Christ, and all the dead whose faith you have loved have known. Admit them to rejoice in the light of your face, 
and in the resurrection give them the fullness of life. And grant also to us that when our earthly pilgrimage is done, that we may come to an eternal dwelling and live with you forever in communion with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, Blessed Joseph, her spouse, the apostles and martyrs, and with all the saints, where we shall praise and exalt you. Through Jesus Christ, your Son. Through him, and with him, and in him, O God, our mighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. We stand together as God's beloved children at the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom of God, Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, Peace, I leave you, it is my peace that I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church. Graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. May the peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Let us extend God's peace to those around us. God, you take it away and you sin to your own. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away and you sin to your own. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away and you sin to your own. Have Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are they who are called to the supper of the Lamb.
Please join me in reciting the communion again. When the Lord appears, we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. Let us pray. We entreat your majesty, most humbly, O Lord, that as you feed us with the nourishment which comes from the most holy body and blood of your Son, so you may make us shares in his divine nature, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. I want to thank all those who responded so far to the annual gospel appeal. Um, if you need an envelope or a pledge card, they're in the table in the back if you've not made your pledge already. But again, thanks to all of you who are participating. Um, we also have our um, basket for our regular parish envelopes as well. Uh, we did have a parishioner die shortly, uh, Risingdale, I believe that's the last name. Her funeral will be Wednesday uh, morning at, at uh, 11, so there will be no 11.30 Mass on Wednesday this week, so that's a change in the bulletin, so please keep Charlene and her family in your prayers. Um, have a wonderful evening, and enjoy uh, each other's company, and may the Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace.